Alrighty, and we're live. And today we are going to implement this very view that we designed in our last stream. So I'm going to, you know, I can show you right now what we have. When we tap this button and we are not subscribed, you know, we don't have premium features unlocked. It will show us the paywall view which is the current one just has the button by premium because in the last stream we tried to um, try it out to see whether our setup works and once we buy premium we can even cancel it will dismiss the view and so yeah let's just get right to it i was thinking whether it makes sense to introduce two more price categories one is weekly for a dollar aj hey good morning how are you i'm good thank you i just ate i'm uh, I'm not I'm not food coming, but I'm pretty full. How are you? How's your morning going? I was just saying that I'm thinking of whether or not we should introduce two more price categories one for weekly for a dollar and once for yearly for like ten dollars that way uh, the monthly looks much more Enticing because one dollar per week is like four dollars a month 150 per month is sounds super cheap in that case and then ten dollars a year it's also kind of cheap because it's almost 50% less than the monthly. <clears throat> monthly, it's $18 a year, right? We could do $12 instead down here. Something like, oh, but $12 would be, oh yeah, yeah. Something like that. But later on, we can start with this screen first, I would say. <clears throat> okay, let's do that. We have the premium feature subscription helper yeah so that's our screen here that just has the buy button oh yeah i wanted to change this one enable button i wanted to not have a did set but as soon as we're setting it we say enable button here rather like that like this much better that way it's not you know there's no magic going on all right i think we should have more categories it'll increase chance of people buying yeah right i agree yeah i think here's what we can do we can start implementing the whole thing and then since that one we can make this a stack view uh, and then easily add uh, two more categories afterwards and adjust the sizing here a little bit so yeah uh i think the whole thing could be a stack view one two three mm, and then you have this one yeah because you can define with the spacing at what after what element and then this whole thing could be just stack view okay so that title could be an own view label. This view could be the image with text. Also, I sent you an article related to subscriptions. Maybe it'll help you in some way. Oh yeah, I saw it. I didn't read it yet, but I saw it on Instagram, right? Did you send it to me today? I have to actually, now that you say that, I have to mark your message unread so I don't forget about it. Let me just do that right now. Okay, great. Oh yeah, it was, it was, well, it was yesterday night for me that you sent me the article. Thank you, AJ. I definitely have a look at how to edit because, you know, I don't want to come up with stuff when there is proven tried and true uh, ways of doing things. Okay, let's do, yeah, let's just start with the, say with the title. So it's going to be um, title label. A UI label. I'm not sure why my machine is slower than usual. At least that's what it feels like. Label return UI, uh, just label. And then we have the text is going to be, what did we say? Better workout premium. Okay. Better workout premium. And then the font can be system font of size 
font size dot humongous. I wish I wish it would actually auto well show me the documentation to it because I did add it. I'm not sure why it wouldn't here. If we jump, yeah, it's by revenue cat. Okay, great, yeah, even better. 125, I think that's too big. But see, three dashes means auto completion should show this comment right here, but it doesn't. Okay, let's go with X large. X large, uh, that has to be a var. Wait a second, no, it doesn't have to be a var. That's just a type. <clears throat> right let's add our stack view ui stack view equals return stack view like this stack view and then um, the axis is going to be vertical mm, for now that's all the configuration we need. And then it has to be executed. And then if we, that buy button is gonna change into an own, see, that's gonna be interesting. It has to be an own view. Yeah, we're gonna do that. And then maybe even add a touch event or so to that view, okay. No need for this button. No need for that button. Actually, we could keep that one. This could be the restore button in the end. Restore. Just ultimately. Restore purchase. Like that. It doesn't have a background color. Like this. And it's always enabled. Mm, that one, yeah, it says enable buy button, okay. Enable buy button. <clears throat> this week is three day work for me. Oh, that's great. So you have, basically today's Wednesday for me. That means you have no work for tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Is that what it is? Let's add here. The only sub view, sub view we're going to add a stack view and then add a range sub view title label. That's all we do for now. Then here, stack view, snap, make constraints. And then it's just gonna be Hmm. Yeah. Edges equal to super view. I wonder if you can do, yeah, see, you cannot do, you can do offset and inset, but what does it even mean? It's like left, right, top, bottom. So top and left equal to super view with an offset of 15. Actually, do we need an offset of 15 from top? Maybe. And then bottom right equal to super view with an inset of 15. That way we have proper spacing. Text color of label is going to be white. And then, yeah, that's it. That We should already see it probably in the center. If, if we run it, I took leave on Monday and yesterday I had holiday. Now it's just two days until the weekend. I see, you had a good start in the week. Well, that's great. It's a good use of your holiday to have an extended weekend basically, right? And Monday and Tuesdays are the uh, busiest days anyway, right? So if you ever take holidays, it's uh, best you take them in the beginning of the week. So yeah, it's in the middle, but it's humongous. Well, it's pretty large. We don't need it this large. Just large. And then we can say bold. Bold. 
Let's rerun and see. Hmm. Snapkit is looks cool. I'll try it sometime. Oh, AJ, I definitely recommend it. It's so much easier. It's and and the learning curve is basically non-existent. There's nothing to learn about Snapkit really. You just start using it like right away. All you need to know is you just import Snapkit and on your views, you just access Snap and then say, okay, I want to make constraints and you get your um, constraint maker basically into your closure. And then you say, okay, top left equal to super view done. You don't have to say equal to, and then reference the view of this or you could say equal to and reference any other view, but that's it. That's like, it's the single line. Um, it's super, and you, you know, you can combine it. You can say top left because you know, you know, you want to line it like this. You can also do just top equal to whatever. And that's all it is. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Next is the image view. Next up, private let. Um, chart image view image view equals new image return image view and then here I'm going to say image view content mode scale aspect fit and I think image view dot image yeah you I think you can set the image like this you can also pass it in like that so we might just want to say image equals y image and then named and then what is it called asset manager that, that I have image asset dot and then hmm because that's not going to be a logo it's, it's going to be that image let me see if i can drag it or can i copy just paste it in here there you go image uh, let's see chart image it's called like that then go into utils. We should have our managers in here. Somewhere we should have our image manager. Oh, it's outside here. It's image asset, it's not a manager. Okay. Static let uh, chart image has the name chart image. And now I can go here and say chart image accessed and pass in the image like this and done. Now we got the image in place and we can add it as an arranged sub view and it should just pop up here. Let's see, stack view, add arranged sub view. It's gonna be the, what did we call it? Chart IV, right? Yes. No constraints whatsoever. And let's see. Yeah, stack view is, I, when I heard about it the first time, I remember a couple of years back, I just didn't want to use it because I felt like I still had to learn so much that I didn't want to add yet another thing to learn how to style UI. I was just getting familiar, very familiar with uh, angers and, and constraints. And then once I discovered stack view, I'm like, wow, this is, it makes your life so much easier, especially if you want to hide UI uh, under conditions. Okay, so it has the, yep, looks good. Now we need, this is another description label. We can put it down here. We can actually just say copy pasta copy paste description label and then what did we say we said lock your weight progress right how do you give different spacing for different elements in stack view 
lock your weight progress. Let me show you how. Let me show you how now, because we are going to need it now. We have, we're going to need this one to be right under uh, that image, right? So let's see first, is that still bolt? Not really, that's just system then. System and then font size, uh, almost, let's just say almost medium. White and let's add it. View add a range sub view, description label. Okay, let's run it, have a look, and then I'll show you how you can add custom spacing in between the sub views in, an, in a stack view. Mm -hmm. So we have our title up here, image, and then log your weight progress. Okay, great. We have to center these labels as well. It's interesting that this one would be at the bottom, so it's like, I don't know what stack view is, you know, interpreting all these as that it will, it will lay it out like this. But now we can set up, let's say we just set it up like here, stack view, and then add, uh, what is it? Spacing, custom spacing, set custom spacing here. You can say um, set custom spacing and then uh, you, you just say how much spacing you want. Say you want in between these two, how much is that? Let's use a rectangle to see. Uh, it's gonna be about 23. So let's just say 20, okay? So 20 after which view? This one, so title label. We have, we're, you know, we're using the property. And then if I rerun the app, this should just work. And that way you can just set the spacing, yeah, for every view, for every after view. Mm. Let's see if this worked. It did not work. Why didn't it work? Uh, let's see. Can we do something? Can we do something to see why? Let's use this one. But that's how you do it. You use the custom spacing like that. I just wonder why, see, oh, because I guess you have the spacing, see it worked, but that one for some reason gets assigned oh, this whole view. Um, and that might be because it, does, it has an intrinsic height. Mm. Let's see, how can we, we could easily fix that, but it's not dynamic, but it's okay. It's gonna be static anyway. This is always gonna be having the same height. So what is, what is um, large here? Maybe set the title label hugging priority to high. Hugging priority? Okay, let me see what that is. Hi, do I have to set this? Maybe I'm learning something new right now. What is hugging priority? Set content hugging priority. That way it can, it can be dynamic as well. So I will have to set it on, um, do I have to set it on the stack view? Label set hugging priority to high. Default high or required, right? That's the highest on the label. And then for axis of uh, vertical, right? Okay, let's see. Never used this function before. I didn't even know this existed. That would be pretty cool if that one. Worked out. 
Yo, Destiny, thank you for your follow. Welcome to the stream. We're just trying to figure out, oh, look at this. We're trying to figure out how we can uh, put the label into its place where it should be based on our design that we made. This is a paywall. This is the premium uh, screen to pay for the feature that we just implemented also in the stream. Yeah, so let's see. Why is this one at the top? It's default high because it should. Oh yeah, we can introduce navigation view. We wanted to do that anyway. Yeah, but you're right. You're right, uh, AJ. Look at this. It's already having. Uh, it is already hugging. I mean, I guess we can say default high. But it worked with, it worked with required. And then on top of it, when we are presenting it, presenting the premium feature VC, we want to do that with a navigation controller. UI navigation controller, root controller, copy paste all of that into here, pass in the view controller and then it's gonna be full screen and then we're presenting it like this and now we should have a navigation in place learning swift to, the, to this will be a good chance for me to learn some more yeah and feel free to ask any questions it's great that, to hear that you started uh, learning swift when did you start how far are you is it your first programming language Yeah, uh, that didn't work. Premium features. Present premium features. Present weight longing feature. We are using that and then we're presenting. Now. Let's double check here. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. We do have the navigation in place, it seems. But for some reason, is the hugging stuff messing this thing up? Let me just try for now, really quick in here, to command it out and see what it does. Mm. Set up navigation, let's go into here. Let's have our... Oh yeah, we will have to do all of this for iOS 15 and later. Barton color and all of that as well. And then we don't need a title, that's fine. A few months, just been following some tutorials and yeah, it's my first language. All right. Um, so you're learning the basics in terms of uh, variables as well and functions and classes and all that. How's it going? Mm. Okay, let's do the setup. Let's uh, implement the function to set up. Let's close that one here. Set up navigation. Let's do it after private func set up navigation. Navigation, Let's throw everything in here. Navigation controller is all set up like that. Mm. Here we can actually call setup navigation. That's part of the view. I could also put it in here. Are you working on an own project already, Destiny? Like a super, super small project, but uh, still. Okay, we got this in place, great. 
Let's put the default high back and just see whether it's overlapping what's happening there. Oh no, there we go. It's at the top. Perfect. The only thing it's, oh yeah, because that image view now has, all right, yeah. So the image view needs, it needs um, constraints. I want it to be a certain height and width, say 250 by 200, or actually, yeah, we can just say the height is going to be 200. And that will take care of that. Uh, yeah, it will take care of that. It will be right under the, the title label. Not at the moment, but I feel like I should do. Um, so it depends on how far you are uh, at your learning journey regarding, you know, understanding what how the fundamentals work, uh, variables and classes. So if you understand variables, classes, functions, and I think that's it. I think that's all you need to start um, working on your first super small app project. If you understand these concepts, because that's the minimal, like the minimum what you are going to use, you're going to use classes, you're going to use variables, understand the variables and you're going to use functions to uh, do stuff. And then, yeah, yeah, if you are ready with those, I totally recommend starting a super small project. But the ca caveat is start a super small project, like ridiculously small, like really super small, something like, oh, I wanted to press a button and the text above should change kind of project because you're gonna have to learn so much about Xcode already, you don't want to overwhelm yourself with your project that you have to, you know, on top of it, learn as well. Uh, okay, so we got this one. Now let's uh, set some constraints here. For, we got the spacing, right, for the title label. Let's say our chart image view will have chart image view, snap, make constraints. And then we are going to say height is equal to a constant of 200, we said, right? That should push the whole image view up and make it overall smaller. I feel like I should add a better picture because that was kind of blurry. We can do that later, just replace the image. Or make it even smaller. But I think we should probably replace it. Yeah, see, so now it's on top, great. Cause now it has a height and it's not getting um, like, like all the space from stack view assigned. Now for this one, we could also say, okay, for title label, how is it? Title label on top. Okay, we have some, we have some offset on top. Let's remove this. Top equal offset, let's say 30, adding some spaces from top. Uh, title label should be centered. So like label center uh, text alignment equals center. Same goes for this guy here. and be right back all right be right back yeah you should small side projects are essential to improve your knowledge and confidence okay i will do just i appreciate the help and advice yeah destiny go ahead go ahead um there should be yeah there's great tutorials on on youtube how to start out um, if you i mean you probably have you probably came across sean allen or coding with chris or let's build that app maybe even my tutorials, but I don't know if I would recommend. Actually, you can still use them. So let's see. Okay, we are going to. 
this is centered, great. Now we want this one to be right under this image. That means we will have to say stack view, set custom spacing. Um, how much spacing actually? Less than this one. Okay, that was 20. So then we say 10, after which view? The chart image view, right? Spacing that we want in our stack view should be after the chart image view. And then that one should also have a um, hugging priority of, let's move some stuff over. Your tutorials are still beginner friendly and very useful. Thank you, AJ. I appreciate it. Actually, I was thinking of um, starting again here and there to add occasional, occasionally new tutorials that I think are useful. Uh, people are asking, hey, how can you do this? How you can do that? And I feel like those are very, very simple things you can really easily explain how to do, like local push notifications, right? Okay. We set the hugging priority for the description label. Been using Hacking with Swift and some, oh yeah, some Alan, Sean Allen videos. There you go, Hacking with Swift. Yes. Mm. Okay, let's see if it worked. No, oh yeah, it, it did work. But we also have, what we can do is we can eliminate the stack views bottom constraint. We don't need that because it's going to be, you know, so far. For right now, we don't need the bottom constraint um, just so we can work our way from top to bottom, adding all our views to places. And once we have all our views, then we can add the bottom constraint and um, yeah, either add an empty view. So that one gets to fills out, you know, what's left over or we solve it differently. But look, we're getting there. This is the design and that's the implementation so far. We're a little bit off with the title, but that's okay. Yeah, how does it look? Coming together, right? And now next, this one I would like to put into an own view. So I don't have to add three labels into stack view. So let's do that. We are here, premium feature. Let's do a new group. Let's say view, create a new view, and we can call it feature view because later on we can just go in there and change it up uh, as we introduce new features and it will just work. Uh, feature view, right? Yeah, let's call it like this. And here we go. You like it? Final class feature view. Here's from UI view. And then what we do, what do we need? Just three labels so far. Private let actually. Let's just copy this whole thing over. Where is it? like this and then say, hmm, hmm, I wonder, it could be a stack view and then the styling could be reused. Okay, let's do, all righty, I have an idea. Let's comment this out. Let's use a stack view, private, let stack view. And then stack view equals UI stack view. Return stack view. Axis is going to be vertical. I think, was it default vertical or horizontal? The default is horizontal. That's what I thought. That's why we always have to set it vertical. Okay. In it frame frame. Um, let's do a setup here. Feature view 
and then this is going to be our setup function that we're calling on init. Now we need to conf we need to fix this little warning. There we go. Bam. Fixed. And here, what do we set up? We want to set up, oh yeah, private func setup view. We want to add the sub. Oh, this is already a view. Add sub view. Let's see, this is gonna be, yeah, that makes sense. Stack view. We're adding the stack view. And now we could say private, well, this is going to be the logic here. Logic extension, or we can put it all in here, it's fine. Private func create label with title string. And that's going to return a UI label of the same style. It's going to be uh, same size. It's going to be white. It's going to be, I guess that's all it is really. Martin, I once saw you create a VM for UI table view data source. I need to use something similar in my work. Do you mind briefing it or maybe showing it once? Yeah. It's, it's, it's fairly easy. It, um, you just, you know, you can just create a class. Let's see here in uh, workout, I think. Or did I do it in exercise? Let's see. Where do we have, where do we have view model? There we go, progress. Um, so you just create a a pro like you call it whatever you want, right? Your class, and it has to, it has to uh, conform to you a table data source, and implement the data source hooks just like your view controller would, and then you have your local property um, that you want to use as, as your data source. It's an array, right, of something just like in your view controller, and then how do you set the values here? Well, you, where, however you would set them in your view controller and then you just, everything your view controller would do, you would just do it in this class instead and you just call it view model. It's really just like, oh, you define your local property in this class instead of view controller. And then when you say in your view controller, that's the only difference. In your view controller then, when you are setting up your table view, you say your data source is not self, right? But it is the, the um, your, v, your, your view model, basically you will have to have an instance of, array, of it already, right? Your view model, you, you make an instance of it and then here you, you assign that um, variable to you as a data, data source. So the table view knows which, basically which class to ask for its data source. And that's it, I hope that's good enough um, for an explanation. Let me know. So where was I? Oh yeah, right here. Funk. And then here we want to say label, UI label. And then we want to say label uh, text color is equals white. And then we want to say label text is equals uh, title. Actually, we can say with title like this. Or actually, it's a text. Yep, got it. How do you set the array by the, by the way from the view controller? Uh, so for me, I have a static array because I I don't have dynamic va uh, values uh, that come in there. But you can literally just say. Let's see, in progress VM, you can have a public function. Yeah, you say func configure, and then you say list, and then this is gonna be your string list, whatever. And then you say self, and then whatever your data source variable is, you set it uh, equal to that. And then you say, then you have to reload the table view, right? But the table view is in a view controller. So how do you know 
that you want to uh, reload the table view. You could, in the view controller, you can call this function and right afterwards, if there's no asynchronous stuff going on, right afterwards you can call table view reload because you know I'm setting new data and now I want to reload the table view. You can do it like this. Or if you want to be more independent, you can implement a uh, delegate and then you can have um, func did update data source. And then you have your view controller conform to that and then um, implement that function, which means whenever this function is called, you can uh, you can define in your view controller what you want to do, which is for example table view dot reload right, reload data, and this function you call it from here. You say did update, or, uh, you say delegate did what is it? Because you have the delegate uh, here right, and then you say did update data source and then this could be asynchronous here you can um you can call this whenever your asynchronous task is done and this will call your view controller whenever it's done and then yeah you can solve it like this i hope that helps let's remove that stuff here again and down here we want to return the label and now we can actually we can do we can do stack view, add arranged sub view, and then call create label with a string. And we can literally just get this here, this one here. Let's copy and paste it. Thanks a lot. And sorry to shift the stream focus. Oh, don't worry, AJ. I think it's it's very valuable. I think maybe you know someone else can uh, pick up on that as well. So we're gonna just copy and paste it like this and put it in here like that wait a second yeah and then more to come like this great now we added these three things and we only need to constrain them set up constraints and then stack view Actually, yeah, it's called stack view. Snap, make constraints. And then the, yeah, all the edges can be equal to super view. Should it have a set height? Um, probably doesn't need to. It has an intrinsic height based on the font size and whatnot. I would think it's 17 by default. So we saved ourselves to write this one three times up here, you know, and um, yeah, it's less code. It's just repetitive. And that way we, and we would have to have three lines here regardless, because we would have the first line, the second and the third. And how do you call these variables anyway? Right. Um, now we got this one in place and we can, we're setting it up. Uh, we'll have to call these, fun these functions in here, set up constraints as well. So view set up first then constraints and then create label is called in here. Great. We have to import snap kit. Import snap kit like this. And now we can go back here and we can use it. Uh, we want to place it right under the description. So here we're going to say private let and then feature list view. Oh, we should have called it feature list view, right? This was so intuitive to write right now. Uh, it's not just feature view, it's a list of features. So feature list view. That's the name. Okay. Feature list view. And then in here, feature list view is equal to feature list view like this stack view add arranged feature list view and how much spacing uh similar to up here we could actually go for the same spacing just so there is consistency in the ui after the description 
label. There should be 20 points in spacing. Let's run it and see. Let's see how it looks like. If it looks exactly like this, it should be left aligned by default. We set the font to white as well. Can I find setup and scope? What do you mean? Oh yeah, I renamed it. It's this now. Okay, great. I want to rename this one too. Build succeeded. I tried my uh, this app on my iPhone and for some reason it crashes whenever I tip, tap the lock wait button. So I have to look into what's happening there. Yeah, look at this. Oh, look, it has the full width. We want to set a, hmm. Okay, we can put it in here. We can actually, I was wondering why the line height is so different here than here, but it's because of the icons, the emojis. So we want to say that the stack view has a certain constraint. So it's not going to be, well, the stack view can be all the way to the edges, but the make constraint, the width of the current view should be equal to hmm, 250 maybe. And then, oh, you want it centered as well, no? Yeah, I would like to have it centered. I wonder whenever, so here, this is going to be interesting because I'm instantiating it at this point and it's not added as a sub view yet. And on instantiation, it's gonna run these constraints, which are which is fine as long as I don't reference its parent view because that's not non-existent at this point yet. And I was thinking of saying just equal to like the center ax axis is going to be equal to. Oh, you know what? We can just do this. Uh, like this, and then we're gonna say center ax axis equal to super view, because that super view does exist. And then we just say uh, top and bottom. And I hope that's I hope this this works out. Feature view that we added as a yeah feature list view we did add it, and then we said okay. Now we have a a fixed width, and then we say we center it on the x axis. There we go. Uh, obviously, if we have a fixed width, we will have to make sure that uh, either uh, we set a width so the text that we're using is always working out, or we're doing um, we're letting, we're letting the font shrink to always fit the fixed width. But I don't like that because it's going to be inconsistent with longer text. It's going to be smaller font and shorter text going to be bigger font, all in the same area and so here we go i got a little bit more line spacing here so what we can do is very easily is we can say stack view spacing and let's give it um i don't know three right three looks good and give some spacing in between the sub views and then we get to that button and then to this button and then we should be done with our feature view and that button will trigger the purchase flow so you can purchase the subscription that will unlock the weight logging feature here see spacing got a little bit bigger now maybe we should do five look how close this head to this uh, chart is it's very close right Let's run and see whether it's still going to be very close. Mm. And then we're done with this view and now we can focus. This is going to be an own view as well. We can start uh, actually implementing that now because that one is done. We're done with this one. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger now. Two more points bigger. 
looks this looks all right doesn't it i only have to replace this image because it's pretty pretty um blurry all right now the next view is going to be so the other views i see it doesn't have to be reusable does it i think you know i could make it so that i can either say it's going to be my monthly subscription view and then it's very specific to be monthly and later on when i when i introduce weekly and yearly it'll be separate views as well three in total or they're going to all look alike like very similar i'm going to write one view and that is um configurable to display or not display that in addition and this is going to be fun and have that one all three basically actually only these two labels configurable yeah i think we can do that hmm how are we going to implement this one I guess it's going to be fine. This is going to be overlapping out of our view, I would say. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, let's do a reusable component. So let's say subscription view or subscription button view. How do we want to call it? How do we want to call it? That's a subscription button view, I guess. Subs or buy button view, buy button. Mm, subs well, I guess it's a buy button view, right? It's shorter than subscription. Let's call it buy button view. Now, okay, let me have a sip. Hmm. Here. UI kit. Final class. UI view. And then we have one, two, three labels. And actually four. Potentially, yeah, four. And then we have two containers. Okay. Two containers were this one, yeah, main and trial container. Okay, trial label. Yeah, we can call it even private let trial label. UI label. Label. Return label and let's see this is going to be bold but smaller ish actually same size so then label uh, font is equal to bold system font off size uh, either font size was it medium oh see medium now it's gonna did you see that it just told me 24 almost medium i think is 17 or 20, 20, small as me, uh, 17. You can also go for UI label dot font size. Um, where is it? Size, or was it UI font dot label size? Yeah, that's the default size for labels if you were not to set them. And that's by default, I think 17. It's native to UI kit, but we're going to say font size. This is our own class here and then say small. See 17. Now it does it. And small and bold. And then we have the, how do we call that one? This kind of label is like a reoccurring thing it's either weekly monthly or yearly so it's a uh, what do you call it it's because that's going to be the price label and the description label if you will and that one is the time label 
the, the time frame label, duration label. Oh yeah, I guess maybe duration label every month, I guess. If you have a better idea, guys, then let me know for variable name, uh, duration label. Is a UI label? And then UI label, return, yeah, return label. And that one is going to be super small. Label font is system, font of size, font size, X small, 13. That's fine, this works. And then we have the price label, which is going to be much bigger, probably as big as this one. So it's gonna be large, right? 32 price label. Okay, and then we have the description label and it's the same as here. description label small okay we got the trial that's small but uh, thick oh yeah gotta be equal and execute it execute it and equal and then let's do the setup Init frame, super init frame. And then here, extension by button view. There's a typo. Private. Punk setup. And then we have private func setup view and private func setup constraints. And here we're calling setup view and setup constraints. And here we're calling setup. And here we're fixing the warning. Done. And in setup view, Oh yeah, now we need the two containers as well. The trial container and the, tri the main container. So let's do private let trial container equals a UI view. Actually, we can already style it uh, UI view like this. Let view equals UI view turn view and then that one what color is this one it's kind of like a Bordeaux 137 and 39 okay now um, custom color UI color plus custom and let's say let's call it wine red custom wine red and it was 137 and 39 for blue i think yep and then this color here let's see oh that's our signature color 2020 54 already got this 2020 54 this is our vibrant or even our custom default red okay great that's the same color as this one here so that's gonna be background color equals to custom wine red and the border radius corner radius I guess eight ish and then we have a continuous here for anything we after iOS 13 we want the you know 
the curve here for the iPhone or for the elements on in iOS, they have this nice continuous, it's not like a sharp curve, it's like, you know, a smoother curve. It's support after iOS 13 and I want to have that here. And so I'm adding it like this. And we can repeat all of that for our main container and just have custom red like this. And then it's going to be custom red. And we can go to constraining them now. This one in here could be a stack view, easily a stack view. This one in here doesn't need to be. Yeah, okay. So then, and this whole thing itself, we want to add view, add sub view. Ah, it's actually already sub view. Add sub view main container and then add sub view. And now I wonder, I could, oh yeah, I could actually main container, add sub view trial container, do it like this. And then I can give a margin to the super view, which is exactly the amount that I want to stick out for uh, the trial container. If this one is 17, a spacing of five on top and then below it's 10, so it's 27. 27 divided by two, Hmm, that's like 13 and a half. Let's do 30. 30 in height, so it's 15, so it's gonna be 15 on top. Which means main container is gonna be make top equal to super view with an offset of 15. And then make leading, bottom, and trailing, actually, left bottom and right equal to super view without any inset or offset so it's just tight and then the trial container can be aj you're back welcome back where did you go did you have your stand up by the way how did how did your last stand up work out with the you know did you say these things that i mentioned or did you work out a different way of um surviving your stand-up. Mm, the trial container should be constrained to top, uh, yeah, top equal to the super view, which is going to be the main container, but with an inset, not offset, inset of 15. So it's going further up. And then we're, go we're going to say to the right, it's going to be the super view as well. And then an inset of almost 30, maybe 20. Inset of 20. And now we have two and that's it. That's all we need for trial. I said exactly what you said and it worked like a charm. <laughs> Glad to hear you, you survived it. Um, that's funny. We got all of that. Now we can actually say here, um, let's say, let's see, trial container, add subview, trial label, right? And then trial label, make, and then we, we're going to say left and right equal to super view, and then make center Y. Wait. Did we give it a height? We didn't give it a height here. Trial container should be 30. Make height equal 30. And then we can say center Y equal to super view. I've noted it down for future standups. <laughs> yeah, it's a magic trick. Uh, use it cautiously. It's like your last resort weapon. So 30 in height. This one is centered on the Y. It sticks out a little bit. It's off inset from the right. That one is placed now. Now we need to place 
the elements in here and for those we want to say actually it's all of these right so let's put them together the trial label and trial, cont trial container can be together and then we get all of these plus the main container could be actually a stack view already instead of a ui view ui stack view like this Mm, and then oh well that's fine this is this is okay this is exactly what we need for main container even though it's a stack view and then let's see try container adds that we might want to do that first and then we say main container add arranged sub view and we're starting with the duration label and we're saying a price label and we're saying description label and all of the three don't have a text yet and so that's going to be what we can configure from the outside so we can say configure configure let's extend our class and say func public func configure with with a duration string price um, string if you will and then description string although we don't need to do that with the description here I would say we can say we can say the duration label dot text is equal to duration. The price label is equal to, and we're putting a dollar sign and then say price. And I guess it can be a double, double, whoops, price like this. And then the description label text is going to be equal to pay x per month so it's going to be pay the price per duration right so it's going to be pay it this is going to be capital then oh it's monthly per uh pay one for 49 i guess you could say it's a per month just monthly right one time purchase per only. Hmm. All right, fair enough. Let's just do. Let's just do here description as well. String, and let's just put it here. Description, like that. This works. Just been watching and learning a lot, by the way. Oh, I'm glad to hear Destiny. Sometimes I think I'm too all over the place, but I'm glad you. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you can learn something. And now, now we can just call this function from, from here. So we're adding it. Where do we have it? Oh, we don't have it anywhere yet. So here, private let, and that's gonna be the buy button, the monthly, right? Monthly buy button equals to actually, by button view and we got a button view or we just call it view by button view and we can say view dot configure and here we can say monthly and the price this is okay here's the thing we're fetching the price here where do we have it? Where do we say purchase package? We're, we're fetching, yeah, here, the offerings. We're offering identifier is unlimited access offering. God damn it. Yeah, so that's the package. 
we should be configuring it here. You know, it's loading and then we're configuring it. Let's try and see if we can do that. So self monthly buy button configure with monthly and then the price is going to be package dot do we have the package store product do we have the price somewhere there we go price is decimal what is decimal is it an alias for double decimal And it's decimal. Oh, interesting. Uncheck sendable. Hmm. And then description is going to be. Let's do. Let's do a pay dollar string interpolation. Whatever the price is per month dot cannot convert value of type decimal to expected argument type double well, let's see if we can let's see if that works now we should be not seeing the red main container decimal conforms to binary integer huh interesting all right let's look it up let's just look it up ns decimal well, Swift decimal to double decimal to double conversion Swift three. Abridged. Ah, nice. Okay. So we can just say price dot double. What? We cannot say that. It's finite, it's normal. What does it have? Hmm. No, it doesn't exist. Seems like it did exist here. NS decimal number. Oh, I guess NS decimal number has to be. Okay, well, that is cumbersome, but we can work with that. Decimal and passing in that one, and then we can say double value. Okay, but price, do it once, and then we're going to reuse it. Price. Price. You have been tricked by so stack overflow. Yeah. I thought so, but it was my own fault. I didn't read properly. Okay, so it means that we don't see the main because it's not configured until the call is done. But the call should be pretty quick. Uh, it should be cached. We did that before. So it should be instantaneously. However, because of that, we're going to implement a spinner that will be there by default. And as soon as we call the configure function, it's going to stop the spinner and just display the stuff. Let's see. It didn't work for some reason. Placeholder in source. Oh yeah, right, because we said, okay, yeah. We don't need uh, any of that. Just say that and then monthly buy button should be added as a arrange sub view right underneath. With some spacing, but we can take care of that afterwards. Once we want to have a look at it first, let's see how it looks like. If it looks like anything. Because we haven't seen it yet. We wrote a lot of code. ignore these warnings okay let's go here bam oh yeah <laughs> uh, first of all we don't see our trial thing 
and it's by default horizontal. Our stack view is supposed to be stack view axis should supposed to be vertical. And are we adding? So I wonder if this trial container is just. I guess we can add it like this to our sub view, uh, to our view itself. Let's do the trial container, add it like that. And then let's change the constraints to the height is going to be 30, that's fine. And then the top is going to be equal to super view, which is fine as well, like perfectly fine. And then the inset from right. Okay. I think that should work. I think that should work. Oh, we do, we're not saying, oh, that's, is that the reason why we don't see anything? Yeah, that's the reason we don't see anything. It doesn't have a width. It's there, but it doesn't have a width because the width is intrinsically defined by the, uh, by the label and its size that it defines for itself for the characters it has in place, which are not there because we didn't say seven day trial or so, seven days free. So we will have to say here, um, what is it? Trial text string like this, right? And then we say trial label dot text equals to trial text. Gonna fix it here. Is magic mouse worth it? How do you know I'm using it? Oh, are you calling, are you, are you, are you talking about magic mouse? So I just bought my stand for my MacBook. So I'm looking more upwards and start using the magic mouse and it, it's totally working for me. I, it worked for me before as well. Uh, especially because I'm using the features like, you know, and I can swipe, you see, from one screen to another, which I really use from one desktop to another. So the normal mouse, I'm not sure if you can set it up like this. So monthly buy button. And then, oh yeah, it's going to have a missing parameter, which is trial text. Trial text is going to be for this one, seven days free, seven days free. Okay, run. And now let's see. Let's see if it's looking the way we want it to look. Curious about the wine red. Hmm. There we go. Ah, God damn it. Of course it is spacing left and right. So left and right. So here left, how much? Wow, 30. Uh, so left is going to be offset 30. Right is going to be inset. Uh, oh, whoops, equal, equal to super view with an inset of 30. Okay, that's better. So it's going to be like 30 from right, 30 from left. How was it height wise? Was the height all right? Hmm. It looks like it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit higher there. So let's stay, let's say 40. And here we're not giving the, uh, the stack view. Ah, see, that's the thing because we're using a stack view. We're kind of limited a little bit in terms of, oh, are we? Yeah, we are. We need a container view, just a, okay. So we do need a container view like this. This is gonna be our stack view comes first, or main container, I would say view. UI view comes first, UI view, that's not gonna have any like this. 
let's add this one to just view background color is going to be the red one the radius one and now this one doesn't need the background color and any of that and it's going to be just stack view and down here what we're going to say is main container that makes sense and then we're going to say main container whoops add sub view stack view and now the stack view option hold stack view is adding add arranged sub views and down here the main container is gonna not have an offset mm, the main container no this no main container is gonna have an offset that's fine everything is fine with the main container however the stack view is gonna have make and then top left top and left top is gonna be 15 left is gonna be 10 top equal to super view offset 10 and then left oh it was the other way around 15 left is offset 5, uh, 10 and then bottom is inset also 15 again right something like this and then we can say the right is just equal to super view not sure if we're gonna ever write all the way to the right and now we should have spacing because the stack view is not gonna have any color and it's gonna be having margin to left and top and bottom and the container view is gonna have the color and everything and should look it should look the same but with spacing now if i didn't do anything wrong Yep, there we go. It looks the same, just with spacing now. Uh, and if we look at the const like how we constructed the whole thing uh, on the layer here, we can see I just added, this is the stack view. Before that one was the stack view and had it had these labels, but it added the stack view so I can say the stack view has a margin to the container and the container is gonna be, okay. Great, great. Now we can actually say the spacing in between. Look, the spacing from left to right, I feel like it should be a little bit more. Okay, we can do that later. The spacing here is gonna be double the size of that one or even triple. So we're having the triple is 60 feature list view let's let's say i guess 60 a multiple of previous used spaces so it feels right let's see how it looks like i have to test yeah i have to see how it works out with smaller devices because i'm supporting all the way back to what is it iOS 13, that's just a deployment target. Oh, iOS 15. Okay, I, I don't know what device is still supporting iOS 15, but what the smallest screen size is that supports this iOS version. I have to double check that. But yeah, we got more spacing now. And the last button is restore button. It's gonna be underneath here. We can just add this normally like this. Private, let, restore, purchase button is equal to actually is a UI button equal to the result of the execution of this anonymous function. Return button and then button set title, restore purchase restore purchase normal it should be blue by default and then oh yeah we want this to be system of type system 
and then oh yeah that's what i can do also with the magic mouse i can just scroll like this um okay restore purchase and then we can just let's see here where are, where are our actions actions down here okay i'm a little bit confused that i have all the stuff down here let's move it up let's move it here and then i like the actions actually to be before logic after logic i think it doesn't matter then okay so we got the buy action and more important than the restore action i don't like to see private funk restore purchase action and then to do implement restore uh, logic. I might buy it next month. The magic mouse. Yeah, if you have the money for it, I think it's, isn't it 50 bucks? At least back in the days it was 50 bucks. And now up here, we can say button set target, actually at target self action selector and then restore purchase action for touch up inside okay that should be the button now we can add it to our how comes you don't have a magic mouse now and you want to get one like do you sometimes work and have the feel oh a magic mouse would be really useful right now the screen is really coming together yeah, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, yeah, we're finishing this up, this stream, for sure. Add a range sub view, restore, purchase button. That, and now, it's around $85 in India. God damn it. Wow. Magic mouse price. The black one is super expensive. Wow, super expensive, 80 bucks? I must be remembering it completely wrong then. Oh no, wait a second. Maybe that's the new one. Cause I have the one with the batteries. The new one has the, uh, the, the, you know, yeah, the lightning cable to charge it. It's rechargeable. This one, I don't have that one. This, this is the newer one that's already super old. Um, but maybe that's why the price is higher. I wonder what Amazon sells it for. Magic Mouse. Let's see if there's any cheaper options. I guess that's the newer version. Magic Mouse. Wow. There you go, wireless, rechargeable. Wonder if that's original for that price or maybe used even. So if we add that button, we want to add, oh yeah, we want to say how much spacing in between. I don't know, really. I don't know, really. Maybe actually what I want to do is stack view, add a range, I feel like Swift UI right now, just a UI view. And then, so it fills up the spacing and then restore, pur restore purchase button is gonna have, it's gonna be cuddling hopefully. Actually, what was it again? The hugging priority here. Oh yeah, self is refer, refer we have to make this a lazy bar to fix that warning. It says, well, yeah. Anyway, it's soft now. Button set hugging to default high for vertical. Yeah, I think it's a new one. And Destiny agrees. Um, damn, what do you agree to? I lost track. So. 
I lost track. Let's see if this one works. Okay, it's cuddling with this. I don't want it cuddling with that because there's actually a view in between. And I would have thought, I would have assumed it will get, you know, um, the left, the spacing that we see down here that will be given to that UI view. That was my goal, kinda. Ah, I guess. I guess we're just gonna say, I guess we can just keep it at that. Probably monthly button, and then we'll just add a spacing on after that, right? Just saying spacing after the monthly button is going to be 20 again. 20 was this one, right? Or was it this one? 20 chart after description. You had 20 after description is that one. After chart was 10. Well, let's just try and see how it looks like and call it a day. I still have to implement the uh, UI touch for the buy button view. So let's just do that really quick. Ah, yeah. And now we'll have to implement a uh, callback. I guess we can do that too really quick. Yeah, see, that looks okay. We can work with that. No, I think that's all right. And then for here, what we want to do is we want to now give it a public delegate. Well, actually we want to say protocol by button view delegate uh, from any object and then did tap by. It's gonna be delegate. It's a weak delegate of type by button view delegate. And when and then we're going to have configure is public, that's fine. We're going to have a action. Extension by button view add a bit C funk uh, by action and then delegate guard let delegate equals delegate else print error self missing delegate return delegate did tap buy and now we have to fire it upon so we're setting stuff up i'm just gonna add it here it's gonna be tap um what is it called again Tar tap event so ui tap gesture recognizer Target self action is going to be selector by action. So it's basically tap event and then self at gesture recognizer tap event like that. We can, yeah, I guess that's, that's, that's all it needs. If I now, right now touch this, nothing happens, right? But if I execute this one, it should actually now recognize it and fire this function. This function should then tell me I didn't assign any delegate. Whoops, missing, missing. Build failed because I changed code in the middle of something. That's not it. I'm missing the bar keep word. Okay. Now. Now, when we run this, we should have a tap recognizer on our view and only our view. It's not a button, but it will behave as if it was a button. Tap it, see? Now we say missing delegate. Even if I tap here and here, no. Here, 
yeah, even here it will, because it has still the margin up and, but if I tap here, wait a second, let me show you. Nothing happens, nothing, nothing. Now, nothing now. So, and in the view controller, whenever we're using the buy button monthly here, buy button view, we want to actually say who the delegate is button the delegate it's going to be self return button but we're not conforming to it right we're not conforming to it so we go down here mark and then we say by button view delegate because that's going to be the section where we conform to it and then extension premium feature VC conforms to buy button view delegate. And now we can say did tab buy. And what should happen when we tap buy? Well, it should do the purchase here. It's the buy action that we have here. We can basically move this whole stuff like this. Actually, yeah, we can, we should do it like this. It's safer. There's a different way, but it's not as nice. Um, and now it should work. Now it should pop up this alert where you want to add your sandbox user. Okay. What did I forget? Cat, um, yeah, has to be a lazy bar. And what about this one? Restore button. Yeah. Restore purchase button. And that's it. Now, God damn it. Uh, what is it here? Use can I set a refer object to see? I guess I forgot to say. Wait, it is. Restore purchase. Oh, not restore purchase button. Action. That's the function. That's what it was. And now if we tap it, it will execute the revenue, asynchronous call, the purchase, the package. And let's see. Let's see if it does. Log wait. Yeah, restore purchase is a button that doesn't execute anything yet because it's empty, right? Here doesn't do anything. Oh, wait a second. Uh, where is it? Restore. Oh, here. Yeah, doesn't do anything yet. But if we tap this one, bam, it says sign in. And then it will just kick off the purchase process. Cancel. Okay, dismiss the whole thing. We can actually handle it differently. Just, you know, not dismiss the whole thing and have a cancel button up here instead. But for now, it works. For now, it's good enough. And we're done with our design uh, that we came up with. A little bit deviated, but I think this still works. Okay, great. I'll just commit. Oh yeah, I will commit this change. And before I do so, I do want to check out on Twitch if there is uh, anyone online who I know. Oh yeah, I'm not even logged in into Safari. Brave browser. Is it gonna reopen all my windows? Of course. Of course it is. And then I can also if I go not to Twitch. I also here on better workout on the Trello board. Let's go here. Table screen, right? Oh, I didn't even move the payment system. Add subscription picture to Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I have to do that. I shall not forget that. Implement a paywall that describes all premium features you will get when you're upgrading. Okay, that one is done. Right? It's done. Ah, that's a pity. No one is online. This is the only guy on Twitch and Instagram that I know that is also streaming iOS development. Okay, fair enough. Brave. Quit. No need for this. 
and here I term and just in time because we're almost at 10 o'clock p.m. and usually I end the stream after two hours and just in time we finished the whole screen with the functionalities well okay I didn't uh, implement the cancel button I actually could still do that in two minutes let's see here cancel because it's just going to be uh, copy and paste mm, here here it is it has an action let's copy it oh wait a second where's the color for it we can see for a second then we have a setup uh, we got a setup navigation function somewhere don't we yeah here and we can say like that actually I do like this one to be up here instead and style plane cancel action is non-existent do we have actions here yes add objective C private func cancel action does nothing but dismiss animated true hey i forgot to ask you about the resume maybe in the next stream oh yeah yeah or ask me on instagram write me a message there too i can then respond to you there uh maybe with a link or so because there's really good resources uh that i that i followed myself so cancel should be uh blue probably i wonder here this one no where's the don't I define anywhere the color? I'm not defining the color anywhere. Oh, here, foreground, custom. No, that's the title text. Oh, this is the one. Yeah, this is the one. Because now it's going to be blue. See, we don't want it to be blue. We want it to be by the bim. But a bush red and and now we are complete now we should be done and have everything implemented exactly as per design red cancel dismiss great Okay, the only thing I really want to add is the spinner and a default height. So it's kind of like, okay, we're waiting for something and for this one to be disabled so you cannot tap it mm, while, it, while it's spinning. But yeah, small adjustments I can do. I think the main thing is implemented. You want to use this feature? Oh, well, it will introduce you to a premium feature. You can buy it and yeah. Okay, awesome. Then um, everyone, AJ, Destiny, and everyone who is lurking in the background, chilling to the poker lofi music that's playing, thank you so much for joining. It was actually really fun. It was, uh, it's actually, <laughs> actually, it's every time fun. Not sure why I said actually. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad we finished this view uh, because we're getting really, really close to then release this feature. I have to make some small improvements like replacing the image, uh, adding a spinner, implementing the restore purchase, and then maybe test it a little bit. But overall, I think, yeah, thank you, AJ. Yeah, I think it doesn't look bad. Not, it doesn't look too bad. Overall, I think we're uh, we're on track to release it soon. This month, for sure. October, for sure. Uh, okay, have an awesome day, guys, or an awesome um, evening, night, See you next time. I'm not sure when I'm going to stream next time. My friend is coming to town on Friday. Uh, but I will let you know on Instagram. And uh, until then, see you later.